In today's video, <clears throat> we're going to be taking a look at the tropics here. And finally, we do have two, not one, but two. So we've gone from zero to two right away. Chances at tropical development that we need to watch very, very closely. We've talked a lot about how historically warm the Atlantic is right now. Regardless of the El Nino, expectations are that we're going to have a, an average to above average hurricane season, uh, which for an El Nino is very, very outside the box. So we're going to be watching for an interesting hurricane year, to say the least. Pretty much unprecedented uh, as far as just how warm things are. So it's a lot, a lot of moving pieces. It can really swing far in either direction, but expectations are that there will be above average activity and sure enough we have two threats here right now 20 percent chance here underneath 30 percent chance here for the further back and further north tracking system so we're going to be watching these daily now we're also going to move on to talk about the upcoming storminess as well so be on the lookout for that there's some big time storm systems rolling through big temperature shifts is a lot of cold front warm front dynamic happening it's a lot like what you see in the springtime but happening here in august so a very, very interesting pattern to say the least. As always, be sure to check out Prestige Weather. It's only five bucks a month. We got a lot going on over there, but I don't want to waste any more of your time because this intro has been insanely long. So let's just get into the model guidance. And as you can see, already by this afternoon, we do have a bit of a storm system moving in. This one's going to be for the Great Lakes, Ohio Valley, and portions of the Northeast and Mid-Atlantic. So certainly a very interesting storm system there. A lot of the Southwest here dealing with some storminess as well. So two different systems, mostly their monsoon activity in the Southwest. But for the Northeast, we actually do have a pretty organized system here. And by the time I reach Tuesday afternoon, which will be tomorrow, uh, we could see that up and down the Ohio Valley, back down through the Southeast coast to Florida, we could see some activity as a result of this system. The heaviest of that precipitation is happening over New England, so keep that in mind. Really, really quiet to the west of this system, though. As you can see, pretty much nothing going on whatsoever. By the time we reach Wednesday the 16th here, it's another quiet day. Although for Canada, we do have a 982 millibar monster storm basically happening for South Central Canada. And it's going to be interesting to see what kind of impacts come from it for these areas here. We do expect some severe weather to be possible, though, I will say. Up and down the east coast, there is some scattered and isolated thunderstorms occurring. The southeast here has the heaviest and most chance at thunderstorms. The northeast is a lot more isolated with those uh, cells, it appears. By Wednesday evening, what we see is that this storm develops a very, very intense cold front look. We see something like this, warm front up here. And what we're seeing is severe weather likely sweeping along this area underneath for the United States and for a bit of Canada as well. Uh, and then by the time we're reaching uh, Thursday afternoon, we can see this becomes a Great Lakes and Ohio Valley system as well as a lot of Canada there. We're going to be watching for severe weather in this pocket of the storm as well. So definitely a very far stretching and very intense high impact storm. We also see still isolated to scattered thunderstorms for the eastern seaboard here and bits and pieces of those kind of monsoon type storms happening out there in the southwest as well. A little bit more active here in the late pattern. Now for Friday the 18th here, we see this low has dramatically, and I mean very dramatically, decreased in intensity. We see 1,002 now. Just a couple of days prior to this, it was a 982. So definitely uh, a 20 millibar swing is, is crazy. We do see a lot of those heavier impacts still lingering with it though. As it's lowering in pressure, it might take some time for some of those storms to die down from when it was a stronger storm. So we could see higher precipitation than you would expect with a storm of this weaker magnitude. Now for the West, overall, I see a lot of isolated and scattered activity happening here. And again, that's Friday the 18th. Let's keep this going towards Saturday the 19th. And this looks like a lot more quiet, okay? So the West is still dealing with about the same amount of activity, but a lot of the East is quieter here. Maybe some isolated and scattered thunderstorms for the Northeast, same story for the Southeast coast, but that's pretty exclusive for a lot of those areas. But overall for the Central and Eastern states, a lot quieter here. Uh, for Saturday. Now, for Sunday the 20th here, what we see is a lot of activity again along that southeast coast, some here for the northeast as well, um, but a lot quieter still. And then the west is still dealing with quite a bit of this activity here as well. So, pretty similar to Saturday, just a little bit more widespread with the precipitation. We do see that this storm gets a little bit more serious up here by Monday evening. We could see a little bit more organization. There's 1,005 here, but I don't think that's the center of complete low pressure here. I think there's a lot of broad low pressure happening in here. 
Could see something come out of it. Southeast still has some activity. There is some pockets like here in the northeast, here in the upper Midwest. So there is some pockets of some storms happening. Other places also still some monsoon activity on top of all of this. But by Tuesday afternoon, let's see what we're seeing. A little bit more of an organized low look. 1006 here. Clearly some frontal boundaries happening in a way. Definitely a warm front there, it appears. Uh, and then outside of that, very quiet. We do see some isolated and scattered thunderstorms for the deeper south, areas along the Great Lakes and northeast. We're also seeing some jet stream driven storms happening in there, but again, overall quiet. Wednesday the 23rd here, we see some thunderstorm activity here for the upper Midwest, the northeast here. Uh, Texas and Louisiana seeing some thunderstorms, but again, a little bit of a quieter day here once more. So later on in the pattern, as we approach the 20th and get beyond it a little bit as well, we see things die down quite a bit here. Let's take a look here at the total precipitation. And with all these storms kind of moving in this general vicinity, we can tell that we're totally seeing a lot of precipitation exactly where those storms go, which isn't very surprising, of course, but you can literally make out the jet stream and the track of those storms just by looking at this total precipitation, which is really, really cool to see. You can also tell that we just have a lot of stagnant activity here or kind of the Gulf and East Coast there, where thunderstorms are just gonna be sitting overhead and not really moving and day over day, seeing chances at isolated and scattered thunderstorms. Just to go over these colors with you, anywhere in the whites is, as a rule of thumb, is pretty much expecting no precipitation according to this model. It won't always be true, but uh, they don't expect a lot, at least we can say that. The grays will be about a 10th of an inch or less. The greens, a 10th of an inch to half an inch. Blues are half an inch to an inch. Your yellows are an inch to two inches. Reds, two to five inches there. And usually the yellows and reds is where we say above average activity is expected. So certainly um, a couple of pockets here, just like this is what I would kind of say. So the Eastern seaboard back down through South Central Canada and for a lot of the Northern states as well, uh, maybe some of that monsoon activity in there bring above average activity as well. Now the temperature pattern we can see we're kind of at the beginning of a big cool down that's gonna end pretty quickly. It gets a follow up cool down here in the east, but we start to see this negative PNA take over right around the 20th here. Big flip. And this is gonna encourage a lot of warmth here into the into the central and eastern states. And I think this will be the end of that cool pattern. As you can see, warmth is prevailing, 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 all the way to the end of the model run here on the 29th, uh, where the heart of the warmth looks to be here. So certainly looking to be a warmer pattern after that 20th time frame. Before that, it's gonna be up and down kind of roller coaster stuff that we've been talking about for days, but we will keep you guys up to date. There can always be changes, of course, and likely we're gonna eventually move out of this pattern as well, whether that be a colder pattern or just a different pattern in general. Only time we'll be able to tell, we will figure it out, of course. Be sure to subscribe, we upload every single day. You can even hit the bell icon for daily notifications when we upload so you never miss one. Be sure to like the video if you did enjoy it, leave a comment down below, and I'll see you guys in the next video.